snow crabs, creatures that historically have filled the Bering Sea, vanished. The survey result in 2021 for Bering Sea snow crab was a complete shock. Everyone caught off guard. The fishery looked extremely healthy. Um, out of nowhere, the stock collapsed. It was, you know, evidently a population collapse. They've looked at multiple answers, trying to figure out where these crabs may have gone. Everyone is asking that question, hey, where'd the crab go and when are they going to come back? You're always going to see highs and lows as a commercial fisherman. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad, feast or famine, but lately, the highs are a lot lower and the lows are even lower than that. It turns out rock bottom has a basement. From the Bering Sea to boatyards in Ballard, a decline in Opelio snow crabs has a ripple effect on the economy. Questions are still floating concerning the reasons behind it, but the impact to Washington crabbers is clear. You're always going to see highs and lows as a commercial fisherman. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad, feast or famine, but lately the highs are a lot lower and the lows are even lower than that. Captain Mark Casto of the Pinnacle says it's a relief to at least see Bristol Bay Red King Crab back up and running. King Crab in paradise uh, season, go up there and have them, you know, just a safe, productive season and, you know, get, par get paid a fair price so, you know, we can make some money and the crew can make some money. King 5 traveled to Alaska and found researchers searching for answers. NOAA is experimenting with pH and water temperature to see what kind of roles ocean acidification or warming may have played and studying the effects of predators like cod. Fish biologist Aaron Fidoa says Bristol Bay Red King Crab has been declining steadily for years, but with snow crabs, the population collapsed. You know, I do think for an Arctic species, the future is uncertain. I, like I said, I'm an optimist and I can only hope that the conditions continue to support you know, viable populations of snow crab. Alaska Department of Fish and Game Research Supervisor Benjamin Daly says it hurts to have to close or limit the fisheries, but that it's a decision made for long term sustainability. We're trying to, you know, err on the side of conservation uh, and give them the best shot that they have for for kind of thriving in the future, given the, the, the challenges that they're facing in the environment. It's peaceful in Kodiak, Alaska. An ecosystem where all species are reliant on each other. Hey, you got this one on? Good morning. Beautiful day here in Kodiak. Hey, good morning. A quiet day on the bay. Sounds like things might be slowing down out there a little. And that is the problem. Yeah, it's winding down here. So. This is usually the time of year when crabbers are frantically getting ready for a long season, but this year is different. In a normal year, you'd have you know people walking back and forth, boats transiting from the dock over here to over here, putting pots on, getting gear ready. If anyone can find them, you can. So. Commercial crabbing is a family business for Gabriel Prout. Have a good one, Mike. We'll talk to you later. But commercial crabbing is once again canceled this year for snow crabs in the Alaskan Bering Sea. What's happened the last couple of years has been completely um, unprecedented and a complete shock and surprise to the industry. To understand the current crabbing crisis, we have to take a look back. Gabriel says crabbing has always been a staple in this local economy. Bering Sea crab fishing has always been a very lucrative business of guys coming back with a boatload of crab, making $100,000 in a matter of a month or two. And catch levels are tightly monitored by government leaders. Every year, information on the crab population is gathered by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration and is reviewed by scientists and a council of leaders from northwest states to set overfishing levels. The state of Alaska ultimately sets the total for how many crabs can be caught each year based on NOAA's survey. So this is a, a male juvenile snow crab. For the first time ever in 2022 and now again in 2023, these scientists and leaders canceled commercial snow crabbing completely, something research biologist Aaron Fidoa says NOAA did not see coming. It was evidently a population collapse and that 10 billion snow crab had disappeared from the system. In 2018, there were an estimated 12.2 billion snow crabs in the Bering Sea. 2019 totals brought just shy of 5 billion, but no red flags were raised at the time. In 2020, NOAA canceled their summer survey, creating a gap in the data. 
Then in 2021, when the survey returned, the worst numbers ever recorded, barely more than 1 billion snow crabs in the Bering Sea, down 10 billion from just three years prior. I did uh, the bulk of the stations in the Eastern Bering Sea that snow crab typically inhabit, and it was very apparent that something was wrong. We dropped the net down at stations where we normally get thousands and thousands of those small juvenile snow crab, and they were virtually absent from those high density stations. She says simultaneous with that first drop in crab numbers, 2018 and 2019 brought record warm water, and that had many indirect impacts on the species, ultimately leading to a large scale mortality event those impacts now seen back to back years. You know, I do think for an Arctic species, the future is uncertain. Like I said, I'm an optimist and I can only hope that the conditions continue to support, you know, viable populations of snow crab. She says they're seeing increasing juvenile crabs now, but it could take years for them to mature to catchable size. Whether or not we see a lot of crab is all relative. If we see a lot of crab one year, it doesn't always mean that we'll see them the next year. I haven't got to reach reach out to anyone yet. Families like Gabriel's are left waiting for those juvenile crabs yeah. to mature and hopefully survive. It's, it's extremely difficult. A species that for them that comes out to about 175. And yeah, makes up 80 to 90 percent of their income and now multiple years of depleted income are catching up. We're at risk of, of losing our, our small family uh, fishing businesses, second, third generation fishermen families. When, when you throw a rock in this pond in the seafood industry in Washington or in Alaska that's you know partially owned down here in Washington, the ripple effect does not stop. At Pike Place Market's oldest fish stand. We had crab, salmon, halibut. People from across the country. St. Louis. St. Louis, where, Missouri? Come just to get a taste of yeah. an industry so iconic yeah. to the Northwest. You gotta feed the people, it's what we do. City Fish co-owner Neil Brebner has sold fish in the market for two decades and says costs of doing business have soared. The increase in general has been amazing. I mean, it's just through the roof. It's the cost of diesel going up, just everything in general, demand, it's the prices have really just gone through the roof. Crab enclosures added to the challenges. Fortunately for city fish, they sell a wide variety of seafood. Here, try that. That's like smoked salmon right there. It's harder when your business centers around crab, like Captain Mark Castos. We're a family owned and it's uh, these closures have been pretty tough. He says closures are just part of the problem. Everything kind of changed this last year. A lot of the seafood Seafood prices all went down, so it's, uh, it was kind of like a double, just a double whammy there. His crew in Seattle's Ballard neighborhood is gearing up to hit the water after a year of making do with work like tendering cod. But as for fishing king crab, they'll be doing it differently. This year we're actually combining my brother's boat's crew and and our boat's crew to to uh, to make it worthwhile. The, with the quota, you know, there's luckily there's enough crab on the grounds to have a fishery but the fishery is not big enough to send, you know, two, two large boats. Fewer boats means less fuel, less maintenance work, less supplies, less money spent here. Each one of those businesses employs 20 or 30 people and that ripple effect keeps going out. You get down to the restaurants and everything else, fish aren't there to be served. Now you're talking about restaurant owners and, and the different wait staff at a restaurant being affected by it. So. Casey McManus started fishing at age five, later starring on Deadliest Catch and basing his business in Seattle. He says it's not just livelihoods at risk, it's a family's chance to enjoy healthy seafood. Unfortunately, with the current state of economy, I think it's people are going up to the cash register and they might have a piece of fish in there, but they have their milk, their butter, their eggs and their cheese. And by the time they get that $100 bill spent for one little basket of groceries, they can't afford the fish. And that's not necessarily their fault. It's just, it's the state of our economy right now. Alaska researchers are working to restore crab populations in the Bering Sea, but businesses hope rapid relief will aid workers in the forms of federal aid, habitat conservation, and people prioritizing fresh caught fish of all kinds, which are tiding some crabbers over for now. Buy wild Alaskan seafood. Do not go out and go to a restaurant where you don't know where your seafood came from. From the Alaskan coast to boats in Seattle's Ballard neighborhood, the return of some Bristol Bay king crab and momentum to restore snow crab makes many hopeful. Go up there and have them, you know, just a safe, 
productive season and you know get par get paid a fair price. Those who feel at home on the water will return to it however they can. There is sweat and heart and soul in this industry. And even with the challenges staying afloat, anybody else want to try a sample of crab? There's a sense of adventure and pride. The action's amazing. I love just meeting people from literally all over the world. Like every day is different. In the careers and lifestyles they love. At first glance, it's everything you'd imagine the state of Alaska would look like. A picture perfect evening from above water. But below, it's a different story. These are juvenile snow crab that came back this year from the Bering Sea. Snow crabs, creatures that historically have filled the Bering Sea, vanished. Everyone caught off guard. The survey result in 2021 for Bering Sea snow crab was a complete shock. A state of Alaska researcher. The fishery looked extremely healthy. Um, out of nowhere, the stock collapsed. A Bering Sea crabber. It was, uh, you know, evidently a population collapse. A National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration biologist. All echoing the same message. This mass disappearance came out of nowhere. They've looked at multiple answers, trying to figure out where these crabs may have gone. It's either a mortality event, right? The crab are not there, they all died or our survey gear didn't sample them. Whether or not that's because they moved, you know, either west or north, those were questions that we certainly asked in 2021. Scientists do not believe the crabs migrated somewhere else because surrounding waters have not seen an increase in crabs. It's not really assumed that, that 10 billion of those small snow crab that don't typically undertake long migrations like that just up and left. They also don't believe overfishing caused this current issue because the crabs that went missing are young, so they're too small for commercial fishing and would likely be too small for pots anyway. We believe the, the population decline for Bering, snow crab, Bering Sea snow crab is largely due to natural mortality events due to env fluctuating environmental conditions. Alaskan scientists believe a key part of this puzzle is the water temperature of Alaska's Bering Sea. Snow crabs prefer cold water, usually between zero to one degree Celsius. But 2018 and 2019 brought record warm waters to the Bering Sea with temperatures above three degrees Celsius. They don't think the warm water directly killed the crabs, but it was likely a domino effect. In some ways, it's sort of telling that that temperature could be the red flag in this situation. Uh, we as scientists are still trying to understand how that relationship plays out. Their best guess is these crabs died from multiple indirect impacts from the warm water, likely a combination of problems stemming from crabs cramming together in cold pools, ultimately spreading disease or fighting for food. You know, in terms of the future for Bering Sea crab populations, I, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm very hopeful that they'll rebound. Really what we need is the, for the environment to kind of revert back to its cold conditions. There is a glimmer of hope. 2022 and 2023 data shows temperatures are almost back to normal in the Bering Sea, but it does not mean it will stay that way. We really need you know, cold conditions to return to the Bering Sea to promote you know, good population growth. However, global climate change is, is an ongoing issue that we're, we're struggling with understanding and understanding how best to manage these fisheries in light of that. For now, they're managing by canceling as long as this crabbing crisis continues. You know, I do think for an Arctic species, the future is uncertain. Like I said, I'm an optimist and I can only hope that the conditions continue to support viable populations of snow crab.